Hey guys, today we are going to talk about ear and eye disorder medications. Oh, and I actually have like a pretty cool little thing here. Let's see if I can get it going. I'm getting fancy with my graphics. Oh, pretty cool, right? Uh, uh, yeah, pretty cool, right? Getting fancy. All right, so let's talk about medications. Now, um, you know, after the trauma of taking cardiac, a lot of students get really overwhelmed thinking about, oh, I now I have to learn completely different medications. Just keep in mind for ear and eye disorders that you need to know kind of what needs to be given um, or how, generally how it's gonna help, but we don't go that in depth into the medications um, like we did for cardiovascular. So like in this section, when we talk about medications, we're more focused on surface level knowing like, hey, for this disease process, here are some drops or other medications that could be helpful to a patient. And um, with a few of them, there's some, you know, um, life or death or, you know, serious teaching that needs to be given and I might want to focus on those. So I try to just break it down and keep it really simple for you here because honestly, there's not that much to know. So if you were hoping on this exam that there would be less medications, you got it. If you're hoping that this next test would be easier, probably not just because that there's so much, um, there's a variety of stuff on this next exam. And so just keep in mind that it's just all about breaking it down and trying to um, understand each of these disorders from its own perspective. So let's get into why we're here, medication. So first there's, um, there's a variety of drops that can be used for eye disorders. Um, but I wanna just talk in general about glaucoma because that's usually where you're gonna see most often that people are needing to take eye drops or other medications. So if you remember from class, glaucoma is a disorder where there's too much pressure and there either is too much fluid building up in the eye or um, pretty much that place where um, the drainage is supposed to come out of the eye, um, it's unable to do that. Um, so since because it's unable to do that, um, there's literally a blockage and pressure builds up and it can actually um, push on your optic nerve and cause you to go blind. So we really need to decrease pressure. And so the, our two goals for medications for glaucoma are to increase the outflow. So in other words, open up that blocked passage and allow for drainage or, and or some of these do both, um, decrease production of um, the fluid that's building up and causing all this pressure. Now, you don't need to know in depth which one does the outflow or the production. Just know in general, that's what these medications are going to do. So I'm going to tell you about some common ones. There's more than these, but here's some of the big ones that I would want to be familiar with um, if I was taking care of a patient with glaucoma. So first, alpha blockers. Now, that sounds familiar, right? You know, we talked about this. We talked about clonidine. And look at this first med, apriclonidine, huh? So yeah, it's just like alpha blockers from your, you know, cardiac trauma that you recently experienced. So alpha blockers um, are just like alpha blockers that you take orally, but these are eye drops. Now these shouldn't be systemically absorbed. And to prevent that, I'm going to tell the patient to put pressure on the inside of their eye when they take these drops to prevent that systemic absorption, because I don't want them to have those cardiovascular side effects. So you're going to notice any of these medications that are cardiovascular, I want to prevent them from having cardiovascular effects on the patient. Um, there's also beta blockers. And again, these are going to end in OL, just like they did for the oral medications, but these are drops. And just like we do for the other medications that we give, the, um, the other beta blockers that we give, we want to check their pulse prior. And if they have, you know, um, a past history of bradycardia, if they have a decreased heart rate, this is not going to be safe to give. So we also have um, what are called carbonic anhydrase inhibitors. And here's a couple examples of some of those. Um, they all end in mide. Um, they can be given orally or by eye drops. And again, these are also going to help with the same thing. Either they're going to help to decrease the amount of fluid you're producing, or they're going to help open up those passages so you can actually drain that fluid so pressure doesn't build up. We can also give oral or IV medications that are diuretics. And these are called osmotic diuretics. These are used in like acute glaucoma when things are really serious. Um, so these are a diuretic. So they're going to cause you to diurese and get fluid off. And we really want that pressure off the eye. But because of that, we're going to need to monitor the fluid and electrolyte balance closely. And that is all you need to know for these meds. And even as a nurse, you know, like going into taking care of these patients, it's knowing how to correctly administer these eye drops and knowing if there's any cardiovascular side effects or fluid and electrolyte side effects that you need to monitor for before.
So let's talk about otosclerosis. So otosclerosis is that disorder in the ear, because think Odo for the ear, where they have, um, their bones are malformed. They never um, you know, developed right. Um, and because of that, they can't hear because they can't uh, you know, conduct that sound or that vibration that goes into their ear because their bones aren't working. So for otosclerosis, we want to strengthen those bones, um, their bones in their ear. And so we're gonna give these medications by mouth and it's sodium fluoride with vitamin D and then calcium carbonate. So think of it like vitamin D, calcium, all the things that give strong bones, that's what we need for these patients. And then there's also medications for Meniere's. And so if you remember with Meniere's, this is the one that is a uh, fluid imbalance or like a lymph imbalance in the ear, and it leads to literal imbalance in the patient. Um, and so uh, pretty much these patients, they feel oh, intense vertigo to the point they can't even get out of bed. So when they're having acute attacks, because with Meniere's you have acute attacks, it gets better, you don't experience any of it for a while, and then it, come back and it comes back and hits you again. So when they're having acute attacks for treatment, we want to fix the symptoms. So we're going to give them things to get rid of that vertigo to make them feel better. Antihistamines, anticholinergic, benzodiazepines, um, antiemetics, things that are going to help with those uncomfortable symptoms that they're having and keep them safe. Um, whereas on the other hand, in between attacks, I want to prevent those attacks. So my two main medications um, that I'm going to really focus on to prevent attacks are going to be diuretics, because those are going to prevent fluid buildup. And then I also want to decrease the risk that they're going to get more attacks, and that's going to be steroids. I might have talked in class about some other medications. There's sometimes that beta or calcium channel blockers are used, things like that. Um, and that is true. Sometimes they're used, um, but those aren't the like first line treatment. The first line treatment for these are going to be for the symptoms, you know, all the medications that are going to help treat those acute symptoms. But for prevention, diuretics and steroids are the top treatments. Um, and that's really all you need to know for Meniere's. Um, last but not least, you know, you're going to see a lot of things about eye drops that some are cholinergic or anticholinergic, and a lot of people can get this confused. You do not have to have, if you're starting to memorize or take notes on this, don't get too in-depth. I just want to kind of show you why we use these medications. So sometimes when you have to go in and get a procedure done, they actually need your pupil to be dilated so they can look inside and be able to um, better uh, assess what's going on if you're having an eye problem and they need to see inside your eye. So sometimes they'll give you drops that will dilate your eye, um, you know, which is really, it's going to help um, in order for them to see more clearly. Now, other times we give cholinergic drops. Cholinergic drops can also be used in glaucoma. They're not used very often, which is why I didn't include them on the first slide. But cholinergic drops can be used, um, again, to help to decrease, uh, we call it the amount, um, sorry, to uh, create that opening to allow for less pressure for glaucoma, or they can help to decrease the amount of fluid that you're producing. Um, but as a whole, just keep in mind, you know, like these are, um, these may be used, you don't have to get too crazy with these eye drops and other meds. It's just knowing the basics, like, hey, some of these have cardiovascular side effects. I need to watch, like, look at these anticholinergics. Uh, what do you call them? And just as like, uh, like a heads up here, look down here, drugs that are anticholinergic, atropine. Do you remember atropine for bradycardia? So these have cardiovascular effects. So knowing in general, if I give atropine drops, it's a chance they're going to have an increased heart rate. Um, you know, they can have some of those cardiovascular effects. So, but um, we're really just focusing on the overall picture that we just want you to understand that these medications, proper administration, decreasing systemic absorption, and then just protecting for the patient's safety is going to be key. Um, but yeah, that's really all you got to know for uh, eye meds. And thank goodness, because it's not my favorite subject, but just for you guys, because I care about you so much, I made a video. Anyway, hope you guys have a great night. Bye.